when you start working a lot with public key infrastructures, you're going to be using a lot of digital certificates. One very common one is something like a public key certificate, where you have now created a public key that's associated somewhere with a private key somewhere else. You've now got a way to match a public key that anyone can use to encrypt information with a private key that you might keep to yourself. So when someone sends you information, only you might be the one to be able to decrypt that. And we do that all with these digital certificates. They are an integral part of a PKI. It's this digital certificate that we use to provide us with that trust of who we might be. After all, we're providing all these public keys out to the world, and people need to be assured that the public key really came from us. There's two very common ways to do this. One is with a centralized certificate authority. There's one person in the organization that is in charge of creating the certificates. They can that you are really you, and they provide you with the certificates. And everybody who's got a certificate can basically trust now that that one central authority has now confirmed that everybody is who they say they are. If you're using an application like PGP or GPG, they use a web of trust. That is one where you're building the certificate yourself, and then you're signing certificates of people you know. And then people they know would sign their certificate. And ultimately, you can trust the friend of a friend of a friend. And therefore, you've created this web of trust by using these independent certificates. There's no need to have a centralized certificate authority in that particular scenario. Managing all of these public keys and private keys very often is built right into the operating system that you're using. If it's a Windows environment that you're in, then Windows domain services have the ability for certificate authorities built right into the operating system, and you can deploy them out with your Windows domain services. There's add-ons for Linux. There's capabilities for Mac OS X. All different operating systems use them in different ways, but there's a lot of options for managing and maintaining a PKI right in the operating system. Whenever you're building out a public key infrastructure, it's usually because you need some way to manage all of these certificates that you're rolling out and putting on your web servers. You're assigning them to the individual users on your network. People are using them to encrypt their hard drive information. There's a lot of different certificates you'd use in a lot of different ways. Most of the time, we're doing this because we want to use asymmetric encryption. You're going to provide people with a public key, and you're going to Use that to encrypt data that they'll send to you that you'll decrypt with a completely different key. Because there's two keys involved, it's asymmetric encryption. If we were using the same key to encrypt as we were using to decrypt, we call that symmetric encryption. You would create your public key and your private key at exactly the same time. They are cryptographically related to each other. And when you build them out, you then have the option to provide a lot of different types of randomization inside of the key. There are a lot of prime numbers that are used within the algorithms to create the key from the very beginning. Cryptography itself is literally a science unto itself. So there's a lot of math involved. But we don't have to worry about that. That's already part of the key creation process. We simply tell our PKI, I'd like to create an asymmetric key pair, please. Provide me with the public key and the private key that are combined to build out that particular key pair. Now that we have that key pair available, we take our public key and we provide it to the world. That's why we call it the public key, because we can post it on our website. We can email it to people. We would put it somewhere that someone would know that definitely was your public key, and it was available for them to use. They would encrypt any data they wanted to send to you with your known public key. You would receive that data, and you would be the only one able to decrypt it. That's the magic of this asymmetric encryption, is if anybody encrypts with your public key, nobody else can decrypt that unless they have your private key. And obviously, a private key is something you would keep to yourself. You wouldn't provide that to anyone else. And because you're the only one with the private key, you can now receive the encrypted data and use that key to decrypt it and see what the original text was. Because you now have all of these keys that are used in so many different places and are spread throughout the organization, a public key infrastructure becomes extremely important. But it takes a lot of planning. You can't simply decide one day, now well, let's make a PKI, and we'll start rolling it out. Usually involves a lot of different parts of the organization. Anybody who needs a way to protect data, it would be the server team, the web team. You'd have developers and programmers that would have to be involved, network resources would be used for this. All of those parts of the organization would come together. You'd have a big meeting. You'd plan it and decide exactly how you wanted to roll out your PKI. In most organizations, you're using a central authority to be able to create these certificates and 
and deploy them out to the rest of the organization. This is what we call a certificate authority. You'll hear it referred to as a CA. If you're in a large organization, you may even need more than one CA. You may need a centralized CA, and there may be subordinate CAs that would then come off of that one in a hierarchical type fashion. This is where you have extremely large organizations, even around the world, so that you don't have to wait for one single person to be able to manage the certificates in your organization. You can manage them separately in different regions, in different states, in different countries that way. The certificate authority process itself involves a lot of different moving parts. There are policies and procedures. You have to worry about the software you're using to manage the CA that's going to run on some type of hardware. There's a different set of security associated with that because you don't want anybody getting their hands on any of these private certificates that you have in your organization. So usually it's a very formal process to plan, create, and manage and maintain your public key infrastructure.